Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today we are dealing with the elephant in the room on the HeroQuest restoration project because today we are dealing with the sorcerer's table and in particular, those candlesticks. As I'm sure most people know, the candlesticks being broken is one of the most common complaints with old copies of HeroQuest and that is because the candlesticks, once they were attached to the table, stood higher than the box. So when people put the lid back on the box, off came the tops of the candlesticks. As you can see, my copy of HeroQuest has got this common problem. But that's not the only issue with the Sorcerer's Table, because also, in the UK, they forgot to include the cardboard surround for the base of the table, and without it, it looks a little bit rubbish. So today I'm going to do a number of things. I'm going to fix the candlesticks, I'm going to make a new surround for the table, and of course I'm going to clean the table up and repaint it. And on this channel, I do like to stick to original components as much as possible, but obviously there is no original cardboard surround in the UK for this, although in the US they did have the cardboard surround. And also, getting the candlesticks is incredibly expensive. You can pay up to £30 for the candlesticks, and I'm not prepared to do that, so I have an alternative solution. Anyway, the first thing to do is to get the candlesticks removed. Do not pull on them or twist them there's a good chance you will snap them. Instead, go from underneath and push them out. I am using a mold line remover so I don't hurt my fingies. And once you have popped those out, you will need to make the holes a little bit wider. You can do that by just getting a file and putting the file into the hole and twisting it a few times. Having done that, if there are any nubs or anything around the edge of the table, get rid of those. And then it's time to make the cardboard surround. For this, I'm using a piece of card that came in the Transformers trading card game that was used as packing material to protect the foil cards. It's about the right thickness for what I want to do here. So I'm measuring up inside the table and I can see it's about 15 millimeters. So I'm going to measure out a strip of card that's 15 millimeters wide to use as my surround. And I don't need to be too exact with this. And of course, if you don't want a cardboard surround, you don't have to have one. As I said, this is actually an addition to the set. It is something that wasn't actually in the original UK set, but I thought it would be nice to add it in. So I'm gonna cut that strip off and then I'm going to mark and score where those folds need to be so that I can easily fold the card in straight lines. And there it is fitting in place and you can see that it's actually not long enough to go all the way around. So I have to cut a second strip just for the fourth edge. And there it is. Not particularly exciting, but it hides that slightly ugly plastic that is underneath. The next thing to do is to glue it all together. So I'm using PVA glue, I'm going to paint it all on the corners, and I'm also going to paint it all over the sides of the cardboard, and also underneath the cardboard to completely seal all of the edges. With that done, it's time to deal with the candlesticks. You can see here that my candlesticks are two different heights. I actually want them to be the slightly shorter height, which is good because I can't make that one longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim the slightly longer one down to the same length. I'm using my clippers. I'm going to get in and cut it at round about the right place. And then I will just use a file and I will file that edge down so that I have two candlesticks that are the same size. And of course, at this point, you could try to make the rest of the candlesticks out of green stuff or something, but I do not have that kind of skill. So I needed to find a bit that I could use. Enter the chain rasps, and in particular, this grave warden character who has this fancy staff candelabra thing, which happens to have candles on it. This is actually perfect for what I want to do. So I am going to cut this guy's hand off. And the good thing about this miniature is in the UK at least, it's pretty easy to find at a good price because it was included with issue one of the Mortal Realms magazine. So loads of people have got this miniature. Loads of people on eBay are selling them off individually or even selling the complete set of chain rasps for very little money. And as the chain rasps are really nice miniatures anyway and have really cool little bits on them, like chains and rusty swords and things. They are really good for bits to put in your bits box. So what I'm doing is just, I've cut his hand off there. And you can see I've got another one here, which is actually the blue one from the cover of the Mortal Realms magazine. And you just need to very carefully trim away the hand and the arm. So you are left with what you have on the right there, just the top part of the candlesticks 
and the candles themselves. And then we need to attach those to our existing HeroQuest candlesticks. And I'm just going to use plastic glue for this. Some people may want to try and pin them for extra stability, but by using plastic glue, you are melting the two elements together. It does form a quite strong bond. It's at least as sturdy as the original candles were before they snapped off. So I'm fine just using plastic glue and making sure it really gets a strong weld. So that's what I'm doing here. Applying the glue, positioning the two parts together as I want them to go, and then just holding them until they are completely set. And that's the build finished so we can get on with painting. First of all, I have spray undercoated everything with Chaos Black and then I have painted over everything again with Abaddon Black. And now we are going to paint the table itself and I'm not being fussy about this. I'm not going to put any wacky colours over the different designs on it. I want this just to look like a carved stone table. For that reason, I'm coating everything with Mechanicus Grey and this is going to take two coats and I need to make sure that I'm getting the sides done, but also underneath any parts of the table that are going to be visible. When that's done and completely dry, I'm going to wash the whole thing with Nuln Oil. I don't need a lot of Nuln Oil on it, and I don't want it pooling too much in the designs, but I do want a complete covering just to knock down the colour of that Mechanicus Grey a little bit, and to help define all those deeper shadows. While that is drying, we're going to switch to our candlesticks and we're going to paint the candlesticks with Balthazar Gold, which is my favourite gold from the Games Workshop range because it's a very coppery sort of colour and once you put some Agrax on it, you get a nice old aged copper look, which I think is perfect for dungeon furniture. And you're going to need two coats of gold on this just to make sure you get a good covering. And when you're done with that, we're switching to Keramite White and we're going to apply two coats of Keramite White over the candles and the flames. You may even find you need three coats of Keramite White, depending on how much you've thinned it down. Next, we're switching to Agrax Earthshade and I'm going to apply a wash of this over the gold areas of the candlestick. And you don't need a lot here. You don't want to absolutely drown the miniature just enough to bring out those details and to get that aging effect that I was talking about earlier. Next, it's back to Mechanica Standard Grey and the main table, and we are going to dry brush the whole thing. This is gonna help revive that Mechanica Standard Grey after the Nolan Oil has gone on it and help to pick out the edges. We're gonna do one dry brush with that, and then we're gonna do the same thing again with Dawnstone, which is a lighter grey color, and we're going to focus this second dry brush on more of the raised edges. And then after that, we're going to switch to a lighter gray again. We're going to switch to administratum gray, and we're gonna do the same thing again, but this time really just focusing on the very edges of that carved design. And I should mention, although it's not in the video, I have also painted Mechanica Standard Gray over the card surround that I made. Once those dry brushes are done, we're going to use Pallid Witch Flesh to paint the pages of the book. We're using Pallid Witch Flesh because if you use a white or something, it's a bit bright, um, a little bit unnatural. And Pallid Witch Flesh has a slightly fleshy look to it. And this is probably the kind of book that has actually been made with human flesh. Pallid Witch Flesh doesn't actually cover very well, so you will probably need at least two coats. When that's done, we're switching back to Balthazar Gold because there are little metal corners on the book. So it's an excuse to get a bit more Balthazar gold on the miniature. Then we're using Evil Sun Scarlet to paint the bookmark through the center of the spine. Obviously just being careful not to get it over the pages. Then I'm gonna set that aside to dry and I'm switching to Flash Gets Yellow to do a dry brush on the flames from the candles. And for this dry brush, we don't wanna go crazy with it. We want to focus on the most raised areas of the flame. When you're painting flames, you kind of work in reverse. You start with white, and then you work up to the darker colors. So you go to yellow, then orange, then red, and then black. But because I'm lazy, I'm actually skipping orange for this one. We're going straight to Evil Sun Scarlet, and we're going to do a dry brush. And we're focusing that dry brush towards the tips of the flames. And then I'm going to put some Cassandora yellow on these flames. And you have to be careful here. Cassandora yellow is really bright. We don't want it to be as bright as it is there going on the flames. You can see 
it's a little bit much. But what I'm doing is I'm putting it on the flames and then I'm going to keep putting water on my brush and then brushing from the bottom of the flames to the top, holding the flames upside down. So gradually it will drag that color up to the top of the flames and you will get a nice gradation. And then while that's drying, I'm going to put some Reichland Flesh Shade over our book, which is now drying. And this will just tone down the Pallid Witch Flesh on the pages, make it look a bit grubby and old. And also it will bring out all the embossed detailing on the page. You will see that as I apply the wash, it runs into the recesses and all of the little details that are written on the page just suddenly pop out. Finally, while that is drying, it's back to the candlesticks and I'm going to use Abaddon Black to do a final dry brush on the very tips of the flames. And you don't want to put too much black on there, you really do just want the very tips of the flames to have a little bit of black on them. And that really does help to make the flames look more realistic. But that's it, we're done. It's ready to assemble our finished piece. You can see here I've got the cardboard surround. I'm going to push that in. And then we have our two candlesticks. And you'll remember I said earlier on in the video to make sure you've made the holes a little bit wider. And that is because these candlesticks are now quite tall. They will not fit in the box at all. So you will need to take them out when you're storing them. And you don't want to have really tight fitting candlesticks. You want them to be able to pull in and out easily. But there we have it. That is our finished table. And although I've had to use some elements that are not from HeroQuest and where possible, I do usually like to keep all original components. I'm quite happy with how this turned out. You can see here in the side by side, it's a much nicer looking piece now than what I had originally. So yeah, even though I would have much rather had just two original candlesticks, considering people on eBay are selling two original candlesticks for up to £30, this is a more cost effective alternative, especially as I already had two of those chain rasp miniatures in my collection just ready for this project. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye-bye.